Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules over his servants. In his mercy and wisdom, <clears throat> he has ruled that we perform certain minimum deeds that he has made obligatory upon us that are required from every Muslim. Everyone must do them. They are known as faraid, and one of them, a singular, is fard. We cannot delay them except when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a delay or even leave them except under certain very specific circumstances which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made exemptions for us out of compassion. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain acts of worship or ibadah extra and that extra is known as nafal or nafila and its plural is nawafil it is the extra worship that is above and beyond what is required what is fard or what is obligatory Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask us about deficiency in nafal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about any shortcoming in fard duties because they are absolutely required from every single one of us. A Muslim must first and foremost focus on the faraid. This is a very important thing to keep in mind at all times. And ensure that he is doing them and pay more attention to them than the nawafil and be cautious of neglecting, forgetting, or falling short in carrying out the faraid or the wajibat. This is the instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to all of us. There is a report in uh, Al-Bayhaqi in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala farada faraida fala tudayyi'uha. Allah has laid down obligatory duties. So do not neglect them. So these obligatory duties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down, do not be forgetful, do not be negligent about those duties. In another hadith which is confirmed, it's authentic, it comes from hadith Qudusi. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا فَتَرَضُ عَلَيْهِ My slave, my servant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant does not come close to me with anything more beloved to me or dearer to me than what I have made fard, than what I have made obligatory upon him. So in the simplest of words that everyone should remember and can remember is faraid comes before nawafil. Fard comes before nafil. Or in a different way. We draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by faraid before we perform nawafil. Or even in a different way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves faraid more than the nawafil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the obligatory duties that are that we are uh, obligated to do more than the extra uh, acts of worship. Therefore there is no point in praying all night or as a matter of fact in praying uh, Salatul Taraweeh when you do not pray Fajr. You must pay zakah correctly before you give sadaqah. Why? Because Salatul Fajr is more important. It's a fard. It's an obligatory prayer. It's more important than Salatul Taraweeh. It's not obligatory. Salatul Fajr is obligatory. In the same way, sadaqah, no matter how, uh, you know, you might feel, oh, you know, these people are really in need. I need to help. And you feel very tender hearted. And you just give sadaqah. But you are not paying zakah. Zakah comes first before you give sadaqah. A question comes, can a person be saved by just doing the faraid? In other words, can I just get by doing the obligatory duties? Can I just get by? Just tell me that. The answer is yes. You may. It is possible to be saved if you limit yourself just to the minimum obligatory duties. But with a condition. You do them perfectly. 
And the truth of the matter is, most of us do not perform the fara'id perfectly. That's why, this is the key. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy, Ar-Rahman, who is more merciful to us than the mother who carried us inside her for nine months and delivered us in pain and agony and, um, and, and, and taught us through Rahmatul Alameen, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that since we are likely to fall short in faraid, it's very likely there is something we can do about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, given us a way to compensate. Some people think of salah. Some people think that it's only prayer when they think of nafil. But in reality, every act of worship, every act of worship is of two types, fard and nafil. There is an obligatory part to it and then there is an extra component to it. Just like there are extra prayers known as sunnah or nafal. The obligatory charity is known as zakah. That's what we are obligated to pay. And the extra charity is known as sadaqah. And actually this is a very common question. Brothers and sisters ask me, what is the difference between zakah and sadaqah? This is the difference between, one major difference between zakah and sadaqah. Not the only one, this is one major difference. Zakah is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires you to pay. You will be asked about it. That's absolutely required. It's not optional. Whereas sadaqah is in most cases, almost always, it's optional. It's the extra part of this worship, which we do with our wealth, which we do with our money. Required pilgrimage is known as hajj. And the extra pilgrimage is commonly known as umrah, even though you can perform an extra hajj. You can perform a hajj that will also be considered nafil. Similarly, there is required minimum amount of knowledge of Islam that every Muslim must possess. So it doesn't matter uh, where you are, who you are, it doesn't matter what level of education, secular education you have or your wealth, it doesn't matter, Not, none of those, nothing else matters. There's a minimum amount which just you being a Muslim must have. If you don't have, you have to acquire it. And if you're negligent in that, you're committing a sin because you're not fulfilling an obligatory duty. You are missing on a Faridah. And then in knowledge there is what is known as extra. And that's a sea without a shore. Some people, they neglect the nawafil. So if they are reminded to pray, for example, uh, the sunnah prayers before dhuhr or after, or the sunnah prayers after maghrib, so on and so forth, they say, well, it's only sunnah. It's only sunnah. If they are reminded to pray on the day of Arafah, they give the same response. As if the sunnah is something to leave, not to do. That's not what sunnah means. The idea behind sunnah is not something that you leave. It's just sunnah. And the reason why they do this is because they do not understand the importance of nawafil. What is the importance of the extra acts of worship? If I can get by just the bare minimum, why do I need to worry about the extra acts of worship? The question is why should we perform Sunnah prayers, Sunnah fast, Sunnah charity, and other forms of extra worship. And all acts of worship, as we said, they have two components. There is the obligatory required component, there is a further, the wajib component, and then there is a type which is nafal, which is extra. There are five reasons. And the reason why it is important to know is I am asked this question by many mothers, where they say that I... Uh, how do I encourage my children to perform nafal or sunnah? I keep telling them, I keep telling them, but they don't do it. How do I encourage my children to perform nafal? 
As a matter of fact, there are many grown-ups who have the same question. They think that nafal is something which they can very conveniently ignore. The first reason is that the nawafil safeguard the faraid. What it means is that if someone who pays attention to nawafil is likely to be cautious of carrying out the faraid. So in other words, if you are careful about performing the extra acts of worship, and you understand the principles which I laid out, which I explained in the first khutbah, it's very likely that you will pay attention to that which is obligatory, because you know that what's obligatory, obviously, is more important. That's the idea behind it. On the other hand, someone who is negligent with nawafil is likely going to be negligent with fard and wajib as well. And this has to do with how the shaitan works. <laughs> a person who is regular in carrying out fard and nafal, he tempts that person to first neglect the nafal. This person is regular. He has a habit. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed him and he is regular in performing the fard as well as the nafal. The fard as well as the sunan. The first thing shaitan tells him is not to, okay, leave the, leave the fard. You know, why are you, why are you praying five times? Why are you fasting? the month of Ramadan, why are you doing all these wajibat? There are so many people who don't do it. Why do you have to worry about it? That's not how he comes first. He first comes and says, look, majority of the people don't even do this. You're doing too much, right? You don't only fast Ramadan, you fast outside of Ramadan. You don't only give zakah, you give extra money outside of zakah as well. You don't only pray your obligatory prayers, you pray extra prayers as well. So just tone it down a little bit. That's how shaitan comes. He says, give up some of the sunan. Give up some of the nawafil. And then slowly, he tempts a person to compromise and give up on the faraid as well. The second reason is the nawafil plug in the holes on Yawm al Qiyamah. The fard which we can do, the faraid, the obligatory duties which we can perform, can suffer from either shortcomings or they might be in completely invalid. So just because I am performing Salatul Jum'ah, just because I'm performing a Salah or I'm fasting, it doesn't mean it's done perfectly. It doesn't mean I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. There might be shortcomings in it. That's the very reason why after we finish Salah, we say what? Astaghfirullah, 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 you just finished Salah. You just completed an act of worship. Why are you asking Allah to forgive you? Astaghfirullah means, oh Allah, forgive me. Cover my shortcomings. Forgive me my sins. You just performed an act of worship. The reason for that is that act of worship and you have to realize that. That's why you are saying those words. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi taught us those words. And he Sallallahu Alaihi himself used to say those words. That that act of worship will have some shortcoming. It will have some deficiency in it. So the fard with shortcomings are like broken arms and legs. And the fard that we do, but is invalid. We do something that just ruins it totally. Makes it invalid. That fard is like an amputated limp. It's like you are missing a foot, you are missing a leg. Or you are missing a hand. The example of amputated fard is prayer without tahara. You are praying. You don't care about making wudu. You are supposed to take a shower. You are supposed to take a shower. But you say, you know what? Allah is merciful. I will just try to get by making wudu. This is the example where you are missing. A limb. It's invalid. Provided our fard was not amputated. So you did wudu when you were supposed to do wudu. And you uh, took a shower or made a ghusl when you were supposed to make a ghusl. In that case, the nafal will be to fard what a cast is for a broken arm or leg. So your nafal will be like a cast to your broken limb. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the sadith is reported by Imam Abu Dawud, إِنَّ أَوَلَ مَا يُحَاسَبُ النَّاسُ بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنَ عَمَالِهِمُ الصَّلَاةِ قَالَ يَقُولُ رَبُّنَا جَلُّ عَزْ لِمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمْ أُنْظُرُ فِي صَلَاةِ عَبْدِ أَتَمَّهَا أَمْ نَقَصَهَا فَإِنْ كَانَتْ تَامَةً كُتِبَتْ لَهُ تَامَةً وَإِنْ كَانَ انْتَقَصَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا قَالَ أُنْظُرُ هَلْ لِعَبْدِ مِنْ تَتَوُّعٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُ تَتَوُّعٍ قال أتم لعبد فريضته من تطوعه ثم تأخذ الأعمال على ذاكم. The first thing 
Rasulullah said the first thing the person will be called to account for. The first thing that you will be questioned about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you is a salah. It's the prayer. On the day of judgment, Allah will say to the angels, look at the salah of my slaves. And this refers to the five obligatory daily prayers. Look at the salah of my slaves. Is it complete or is it deficient? If it is complete, it will be written as complete. But if it was deficient, it will be said, does my slave have any nafal? Does he have anything extra that can complete his fard? And the rest of the deeds will then follow. Meaning the rest of the deeds will be judged in the same way. The nawafil, the extra prayers will make up and compensate for the deficiencies and the shortcomings of the faraid. Third reason, nafal is like extra credit for the students among us. A student who has at least a C can raise their grade to a B or even an A for the finals with extra credit. And those results, the final grade will be what will be announced on the day of judgment. Now, is any motivated student going to say, I have a C, but I'm not going to work for a B, and I definitely don't care about an A? The answer is never. Anyone who is motivated will always try to get a better grade. The question then is, why not aspire for a better grade in the Akhirah? by performing nafal. So if that is everyone's attitude in this life, then why don't we have the exact same attitude towards the akhirah? And the reward of the akhirah, the grade of the akhirah, does not compare to anything in this world. Getting a B or an A in the final means that you will be in the higher levels of Jannah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fourth, nafal increases iman. The rule of iman, the rule of faith, is that your faith increases with good deeds, with worship and obedience, and it decreases with sin and disobedience. This is a very important rule. Whenever I do good deeds, and I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more, my faith increases. And whenever I fall short and I start lagging more and more and more, my faith keeps decreasing accordingly. Nafal strengthens strengthens and builds Iman of a person. So you want to bring your Iman to a higher level, you need to perform more Nafal, more Sunan. Nafal is so potent that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that it brings a person the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَمَا يَزَالُوا عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُوا إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ my slave continues, he continues to come close to me with nawafil. He keeps performing these extra prayers. Now this is the same part of the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, my slave does not come closer to me with anything dearer to me than the fraid, which I mentioned in the first khutbah. It's the same part of the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hadith on Qudasi, uh, that my servant keeps doing the nawafil. He keeps building his iman until he comes very close to me. And I love him. The fifth and the last reason to perform nawafil is like any other good deed. Any other good deed. Nawafil, the nafils, they wipe off your sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Innal hasanati yudhibna sayyat. The mere existence of good deeds expels the bad deeds, the sins. So when a person is busy doing good deeds, there is no room for evil that remains in his or her heart. To conclude, we are in the month of Shaban, the month of Nafal fasting. And inshallah, I'll talk about Shaban more in the coming week, inshallah. But this is a month of extra fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the strength and the ability 
to fast in this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings in all our worship and ibadah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fard as well as nafal acts of worship. Mm hmm.